Let's talk about the Monster Hunter Wilds beta. And before we begin, I just want to say, how dare Capcom give us a taste of this game for just a very short period of time, knowing that everyone is going to want to play this again because you got so much content if you were one of those psychopaths who just happened to use every weapon and then hunted every monster so that you could eke out as much content as possible. Now, I didn't do that. I fought and hunted every monster. I tried to stick to the weapons I really liked. I like the long sword, don't hate me. I love the switch ax, I love the charge blade, that type of stuff. But what I realized is that weapons I didn't really use in worlds. I didn't really use the sword and shield, even though I did love that weapon in Rise. I really love what they did here because it feels like when you take away certain gimmicks like the Clutch Claw and you introduce the focus system, which is the big new addition to Monster Hunter Wilds, you are really able to go one-on-one -on -one with some of these monsters and do big damage consistently. And it's a lot of fun to just look badass the entire time while doing it. If there happened to be a downside to the beta, it's more than likely going to have to do with the visuals and the performance stuff. I know that for a lot of people who played this on PC, if you didn't have a high-end PC, it just wasn't going to run well. I played this on PS5, and the image quality was rough, but I didn't want to put it on quality and have it dip from 30 to 20 constantly, because even on performance mode, it was barely hitting 60 at times. But beyond that, I think I was just excited to see what Capcom was cooking up and I honestly didn't expect for it to be this much. I thought we were going to just get like the first main mission, hunt one of the new monsters, go out and explore a little bit, and then afterwards the beta would end. But instead you were given an entire section to explore. You can hunt four monsters and really bully some of them. I kind of felt bad because the first monster you hunt is the Chattacabra and you are there to simply bully and tenderize this monster. And it stands no chance, by the way. It doesn't matter what weapon you choose. It doesn't matter if you do this solo or with a team. You are going to cook this monster. They are not really a threat at all. And what's really funny is that this is essentially just a tutorial on how to use the focus system. That's it. And the focus system is perfect. I think that it's one of the best systems that Monster Hunter has introduced. I understand that there were people out there who felt like the Clutch Claw was cheap and the Wire Bug was cheap. But here, you are more than capable because now you can completely attack the areas you want to. So if you are a longsword main, or if you are friends with someone who is a longsword main, no longer do you have to yell at them for whiffing badly on some of their attacks. There's no excuse anymore because all you have to do is focus and now you can swing at the parts you're always meant to swing at. This makes you far more capable. Now, you still have to pay attention to your surroundings because when you are swinging these weapons around your teammates, you may knock them around and over and all that stuff. But at least now you have a reasonable reason to be angry at your teammates because Capcom essentially gave you the ability to aim. So you're accountable for your actions now. I don't know how that's going to make everybody feel, but I know that there have been teams that I've ran with where I feel like people are just missing wildly just swinging their weapon around and knocking you around now obviously the focus system is not going to solve everything but it's a great start into a system that i think a lot of people can see as kind of the big compromise to what happened in worlds and rise when the clutch claw and the wire bug came out because i really feel like even though i had no problem with these mechanics and these tools i thought they were really fun to utilize I think the focus system allows you to kind of be on par with some of these monsters because if you have a great sword or anything that can block in this game, you can enter into a clash with the monster, which I think is really cool. I didn't do that because I'm a coward. I'm not going to lie to you. I was pretty much rolling and falling back into my old ways when I was attacking monsters, basically attack, attack, dodge, attack, attack, dodge, that type of stuff, get a good charge up and do a lot of big damage. But I do believe that it adds a layer to the combat that I think a lot of players were expecting instead of going into what the wire bug did, which was give you special abilities that kind of made you OP and that you could spam after a certain period of time. Here, you really have to learn how a weapon works, how it works in focus mode, how it works when you have certain attacks charged up, that type of thing. I really think that's cool. And I also love the fact 
that the focus system allows you to see how brutal and how visceral hunting can be. So one of the things I liked about the Clutch Claw was that it was an easy way for you to wound a monster and do extra damage. Here with the focus system, when you are attacking a monster and then opening up these wounds, you get to see the physical damage, but the moment you're able to utilize your focus attack, which hits you into this really crazy cool looking combo, you can see that wound just kind of explode out. And it's very cool looking, it's very brutal, and you can see the effect it has on the monster. When you're facing the four different monsters here, just kind of watching them get worn down, torn up, watching their wounds get reopened, just kind of torn to pieces, really, really reminded me of the first couple of Monster Hunter games where those were kind of bloody. Now, it, it was still not like a gory game per se, but you are hunting these monsters and doing big grievous damage with these massive weapons and seeing you hit a monster and just watching a wound explode out is one of the coolest effects in this game. And the fact that they get staggered almost immediately and they're in that stun state where they're trying to recover, that is a really satisfying feeling. And it's something I kept going back to as I was fighting these monsters. When I first got into a fight with Ray Dow, I was curious to see whether or not the focus system would be effective when you're going up against these flying monsters who are constantly getting themselves in and out of danger. Now you do have ways to mitigate that. You do have your sling system. So if you're gonna hit them with a flash bug, that does work. But I was curious to see how effective something like the focus system can be. And I think it worked really well because when they're in the air, all you have to do is focus and start swinging wildly at that tail to kind of bring them down aggro the monster, have them attack you, and then focus up your attacks on the parts that really matter. Either their face, if they're wired and you're trying to hit their wings and try to damage their wings so they can't fly anymore. I thought that it worked really well. And I really love the fact that the game kind of shows you that with some of these monsters, because the Raydow has that railgun attack, that when they open themselves up and they try to hit you with that critical strike, that one move that will kill you in one hit, if you happen to time your dodge accordingly or at least get out of that area, there's going to be more than enough time to follow up. And if you're fighting the raid down, I think a lot of people who played the beta know this, you're going to notice that that head is vulnerable to a focus attack. And not only do you do big damage during that time, it's an instant stagger. For myself, I actually love this because there are times where it feels like fighting certain monsters like the Kushala Dora solo were an absolute chore. But if there are abilities that you can now exploit with the focus attack, I think that's great for solo hunters. I think that's something that incentivizes you to go on these solo hunts because now you know you have the capability to knock down these big monsters regardless of the weapon you're using. I think it's great. And it's not just for solo hunters. Obviously, if you are able to nail one of these attacks with a large group, you can then just follow up for big damage. I think the only concern I would have there is that maybe teammates get greedy because for those players who are new to the Monster Hunter series or just curious because this is a best-selling franchise for Capcom, you're probably sitting there like, well, I'm gonna go and dive in head first and just start swinging wildly without realizing that some of these monsters will kill you in one shot and you're gonna be wasting cards. But I do think though, that with well-coordinated teams or at least teams that want to be well-coordinated, I think that a lot of these hunts that were probably giving you problems solo are probably going to be completed very quickly because well-coordinated teams are gonna know when to cut, how when to focus attack, all that type of stuff. And it's going to be really fun because there's all these other quality of life improvements as well, like being able to throw certain bombs and being able to move bombs. Thank goodness that Capcom finally listened because it's really funny when you're trying to place an explosive and you place that barrel far away, but now you can actually pick them up and move them. It's such a small thing, but it's perfect. And the other really big quality of life change is being able to bring a second primary weapon with you. I think that is fantastic. Because when you jump on your mount, and this was something that was introduced in Rise, you're able to heal yourself, rebuff yourself, sharpen your weapon, and then use your mount as a catapult 
to vault yourself onto the monsters in the hopes that you can clutch onto them and start doing damage on their back and bring them down. But I really think that fact that you can bring out a secondary weapon, it just adds a layer of strategy to this game. And it's one that I really enjoy because you're probably telling yourself you're going through this fight, you're using the long sword, you're saying to yourself it's not working, that's obviously a lie. Keep swinging, who cares what your teammates are saying? do your thing but if you get to that point where it's like you know what i want to mix it up a bit i want to engage this enemy or support my teammates from a distance so i'm gonna use the bow gun or whatever you can do that you have that flexibility now you don't need to be carted you don't need to fast travel back to camp you're able to switch your loadout on the fly and that is something i really appreciate i really think that the monster hunter wilds beta probably did more than enough to get the fan base excited you're going to see a number of different videos out there with impressions about how certain weapons work how certain mechanics worked and i really think that what capcom did here is fantastic i really hope that there's a second beta i do i hope it's far more polished to kind of at least allow players to see what the game will look like and hopefully it runs smoother because when i was playing through this I couldn't help but feel like, man, all these muddy textures is not really getting me super excited for the game. But because of all the additions in combat, because of all the quality of life improvements, because it felt like I was going into this massive area and engaging in all these different quests and working with different hunters, I was having a really good time and I really didn't focus on the visuals at all. And that was surprising because what you see in some of these monsters, they look fantastic, especially the way they're moving, the way they're acting, their mannerisms when they get hit, all that stuff. When you're fighting some of these enemies that hunt in packs, that was great. All that is really cool. I like the fact that the environment shifts and changes, that there are certain monsters that will affect the environment. I think all that is great. I think it's really cool. You're in this live environment, this large ecosystem. It's just unfortunate that it was hard to make out a lot of what was going on. And it was even funnier that people were making all these different memes with low quality Monster Hunter Wild. I thought that was great, but it's kind of a message to Capcom that while people were focused on just how good the gameplay was for the beta, it was still distracting that the visuals weren't exactly of a high quality. Now I can forgive them. I really can. This beta features some of the best gameplay that I've experienced in 2024. It's fantastic. It's engaging. And it really reinforces that Monster Hunter has become this massive mainstream property and that Capcom really understands its player base. That's what this beta reinforces. Because if you were upset about some of the additions to worlds like the Clutch Claw, if you thought Rise was a bit too mainstream and player friendly for whatever reason because of the wire bug, then you are going to be very satisfied with the additions, changes, and updates found here in Monster Hunter Wilds. I'm fairly certain that there are going to be people out there right now who will admit that they played the beta for probably 10 to 20 to 30 hours, which I would say is insane, but the Monster Hunter formula is addicting it's simplistic but you are going to get gameplay that can be fairly complex and is really fun either solo or with friends so i get it i put in hundreds of hours into monster hunter worlds same thing with rise and just by playing this beta i really feel like one this is going to be a game of the year contender and I know GTA 6 is more than likely going to come out next year, so it's going to have a bit of an uphill battle. And two, I really feel like I'm going to sink a lot of time in this game. And I'm really excited to see what Capcom has in store because they have not disappointed me yet. And I'm not what I would consider a hardcore fan. I'm not one of those fans that's going to be digging deep into the monster lore or their weapons or any of that stuff but I will catch the occasional YouTube video. But what I'm getting at is that this game is pretty much primed to be massive, and that is just from playing the beta. Imagine for a moment that this is more than likely going to be 
let's say the area that's going to feature six or seven monsters going to run around the first 10 hours or so of the game. Okay, that makes sense. What else do you got in store for me? What other changes are you going to throw at me? What other monsters are you going to introduce? Because that's what Capcom is great at. They constantly introduce new monsters and they're going to have some returning favorites. I'm excited. And I think a lot of people are excited. This is going to be a massive game. And here's the other thing. I didn't even talk about the character creator. <laughs> I didn't talk about creating your Palico. I have seen some insane designs. I don't know what to say. I've like gone online, seen what people have created on Reddit. I made the most basic character. Why? Because it's not going to carry over into the main game. And if it does, damn it, Capcom, you should have told me. But I've seen some incredible designs. And I think fans of this game are going to be really excited. I think a lot of people have wanted to see a sequel to Worlds. I think a lot of people love that game. I love that game. And I really feel like Wild is one of those games where you're going to see just a massive influx of returning players and it's going to bring in a bunch of new players. This might be one of those games that really does bring the community together. I think a lot of people were disappointed in Rise. I can't tell you why, but I think there were a lot of people who were disappointed in Rise. But playing through this beta, I feel like it gives the franchise life. And I'm really looking forward to seeing what Capcom does next because just playing through this small section fighting these four monsters constantly going through the various missions i think they have another hit on their hands i think this is going to be massive and i'm not going to be surprised when a lot of people call out sick for work or whatever and i can't wait to see the content that gets made from this i'm very excited for monster hunter waltz but let me know what you think in the comments. Tell me about your time with the beta. Let me know specifically how much time you put into this game because I do want to know how much time some of you put in. I only put in about six to eight hours, which are working numbers. I understand I got to pump those up. I was really just excited to play with the weapons that I love. Don't hate me. I, not all of us can use the lance or the hunting horn, but if you do use the hunting horn, you will have a place in my party. And that's going to do it for this video. If you happen to like the content, please consider like, sharing, and subscribing. I am Ken from Pixelated Thoughts, and I'll talk to you next time.